2021's Arcane was a huge success. It broke the video game adaptation curse by being one of the first video game adaptations to not upset its fanbase. It became Netflix's most watched show of November 2021, and it got a lot of people into the agonizing pool of toxicity that is League of Legends. But why? Why did this random show, made by the French of all people, do what Hollywood couldn't with its game adaptations? I think that is because of how Arcane engages its audience. If you have watched the show, you're probably typing a comment like, actually, Arcane was amazing because of its deliberately unfinished arcs, incredible animation, and simple yet complex thematic resolution. And yes, you are right, Arcane does have all of that. But I think the thing that really makes Arcane special is how engaging it is. You never feel bored when you watch the show. You are always interested in what's going on because Arcane is incredibly good at making you care. Keeping the attention of your audience is very hard because we live in a time where a lot of people can't handle a video that is longer than 10 seconds because of TikTok. So let's look at how Arcane still makes you care. Let's look at how Arcane nails audience engagement. The most boring part of any story is the setup. It just is. But setup is very necessary to make a story work. Setup can be really boring because you're essentially just giving your viewer information. But that information is necessary a lot of the time. Story elements like a magic system, backstories, the world and MacGuffins need to be explained to the audience in order for you to be able to use them in your story. There are exceptions to this, like soft world building. But even stories with a lot of soft world building still need setup to work. Arcane's entire first act is pretty much just setup. The point of Act 1 is to show us the world, the magic system, and the backstories of some of the characters. We need Act 1 to be able to understand the rest of the show, and it gives us a lot of information. But it doesn't feel like Act 1 is just 3 episodes of exposition, because it's not. Act 1 is there to give the audience what they need to enjoy the rest of the show, yes. But it never feels boring because Act 1 also pays off some of its own setup. Shimmer is a great example of this. Almost every Silco scene in Act 1 is there to show us what Shimmer is so that the show can use that in episodes 5, 7 and 8. But it doesn't feel like the show is just using Silco to set Shimmer up, because Shimmer is also used in Act 1 as a payoff. This makes it so that there isn't any episode that feels boring, because every episode has payoffs on top of its own setup. So instead of setting everything up first, the show puts some payoff between the setup to make the setup less boring. The second thing the show does to make scenes less boring is making them feel earned. The best example of this is the scene where the sisters reunite. This scene doesn't feel like a boring conversation, even when it actually just is. No, it feels like a reward. Fai has been working towards her goal of reuniting with Powder for 3 episodes now, and we were there with her. This scene worked so well because Fai had to trust an enforcer, get stabbed, get betrayed by her old friend, drink Shimmer, and destroy a part of her home to get here. This scene is a reward for everything Vi did in Act 2. And we were there with her the entire time, so we care a lot about this scene. Another great example of this is in A New Hope. The only thing Obi-Wan does on Tatooine after Luke meets him is explaining the world and magic system to Luke and the audience. But I, as an audience member, care a lot about this information, because Luke had to work for it. Luke left his family because he was concerned about a droid he barely knew, he almost got eaten by sand people and was forced to watch his home burn to a crisp. Luke didn't just get all of the information about the Jedi and the Force when he met Obi-Wan. No, he had to do a lot of hard things to get it. And the audience was there with him when he did those things. So we care a lot about this information because the movie treats it as a reward for Luke's hard work. The thing the audience cares about most in a story are the characters. So if you want your audience to care about your story, you have to make them care about the characters. Arcane does this in a very specific and unique way, and I don't know if you will be able to use it in your story, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway, because I think it's kinda genius. So in Act 1, things are bad. Fender is losing power, Powder and Vi have sibling problems, the other kids are forced to steal, and so on and so forth. But after the time skip, everything is even worse. Fender is gone, Powder and Vi are separated, and the other kids are dead. And suddenly, Act 1 doesn't seem bad at all. The show makes us care about the characters by showing us how their lives could be better. And we believe it because we have seen their lives being better. The writers make us want to go back to how things used to be. 
so we care a lot about the characters because we have seen what their life could be like. It would have been obvious that the show was gonna go in this direction if everything was perfect before things got worse. Like everyone knew Prague was gonna die in Fallen Order because he was way too positive for this world. But Arcane makes sure to show us that Act 1's situation was also bad, but it was still way better than Act 2 and 3's situation. This makes it so that we are incredibly invested in the struggles of the characters because we want the same thing as them, a better present. So if you want to engage your audience like Arcane does, make sure to add some payoff to the setup parts of the story, make every usually boring scene feel earned, and show us what the characters could be in contrast to their current worst lives. If you did all of that, your audience should be more interested in what's happening in your story. Hey guys, it's been a while, hasn't it? I've been working on a 90 minute video for a month now, but I'm gonna be honest, I haven't really touched it since Eastern Break ended. It just wasn't fun to edit audio all day long, and I see YouTube as a hobby. And when a hobby isn't fun anymore, maybe it's time to take a break. And now my exams are coming, so I won't have a lot of time to work on videos. And I'm also working on some other big projects on the side. The point is, I won't be able to follow my normal one vid every two weeks schedule until like July. I'm very sorry, but I just really need a break. Also, Zenny subscribed to my channel, so let's look at what he had to say about it. Blowfish, I, I don't know if you're still here, he redeemed the YouTube sub and BOOM! I am now subbed. <laughs> look at his cover art. It's like, what is that? It's over! Blowfish! I have the high- what's with the deer? What did the deer do? What did the deer do? What did the deer do? That deer has a name, and it's Alan Dracula. It is the greatest creature to ever exist, and is the reason Infinity Train Season 2 is incredible. It is our lord and savior, and I will never stop loving it. It has jetpack feet. How can you not love a deer with goddamn jetpack feet? <sighs> anyway, I hope that answered your question.